Welcome to Art for All, the Sketchbook School podcast. I'm your host, Danny Gregory. Each week, I bring you stories, ideas, interviews, and inspiration to keep you company while you work on your own creative project, whether you're drawing, tattooing, editing a film, throwing a pot, knitting a scarf, or baking a tart. I hope this episode inspires you. That's our mission at Sketchbook School, to help encourage art for all, including you, of course. We're about to embark on a very exciting new course called Watercolor Rules and How to Break Them. And we've spent the last few months of production thinking not just about water and color and rules, but also about paper. Each of the teachers in this course has a different favorite watercolor paper, and it's so interesting to see them discuss and and demonstrate their choices. You'll see what I mean on September 17th when the class begins, assuming, of course, that you have already gone to sketchbook.school and signed up. Well, watercolor paper, hot-pressed, cold-pressed, deckled and blanket thick, all the way up to chunky 300 gram weight. Ah, Well, it's one of the loveliest sorts of paper, and I'm just a huge paper addict. So I thought I'd spend this week's episode rhapsodizing about paper in its many forms. Paper's so wonderful, so rich with uses and associations. So this week I want to just revel in it, wrap myself in paper, and talk about as many aspects of it as I can muster. I find that most creative people appreciate paper, so I hope you'll tolerate my waxing poetic on the subject. And besides, it's my birthday, so please indulge me. That'll be my favorite gift. What I think I'll do for this episode is just deal out ideas like so many crisp index cards, a diverse deck of thoughts and facts and observations about paper in all its forms. It'll be a little random, but we might spark some interesting connections in the process. Here goes. My mom taught me to appreciate paper early, to riffle through blank journals and pinch the sheets between my finger pads, to consider pulp and fiber, to notice how a pen flows smoothly here while It bucks and protests there. Since, I've met and felt quite intensely about so many different papers. French toilet paper. Crisp, waxy, impractically non-absorbent and and harsh. Little Italy deli sandwiches wrapped in thick white paper once, sliced in half, and then wrapped again. At nine, I cut my finger in class, and the teacher bound it tightly in green crepe paper, which, as I watched in horror, turned black with my blood. Fibrous, mud-colored hand towels in bus station bathrooms. Huge steel drawers of paper samples, gliding open on ball bearings to reveal large $80 sheets of marbleized paper with decal edges, handmade in Brazil. It's not very hygienic, but I love when people lick their fingertips to turn the pages of a newspaper or a book. It's an old person thing, apparently. Your fingers get drier as you age, and you need some help to grip the paper. One more thing to look forward to. That's a lovely sound, isn't it? Heavy paper being cut with sharp scissors. It reminds me of grade school teachers. I remember buying paper from the school supply shop when I was a small boy at Canberra Grammar School. That's when I first learned the difference between quarto and fool's cap. 25 sheets of paper were called a choir. 
20 choirs made a ream, which is 500 sheets. Two reams make a bundle, and five bundles make a bale. That's 5,000 sheets of paper. We would often buy big, individual, solid sheets of lined paper to write turn papers on, folded once to make four pages, and the clerk would slip the individual sheets into brown paper bags, which seemed a little redundant. I love composition books with that strange sort of sponged ink design on the cover. Eighty pages sewed in the middle gutter. I filled so many of them with math problems and handwriting exercises and stories about knights and their dogs. Then there were loose-leaf binders and reinforcement rings, which I would lick and stick on each hole. There was a huge excitement in the more studious corners of the school library when the first pre-adhesive rings came out. What an innovation! Long rolls of blue waxed paper studded with sticky, peelable white circles. There's no love like a young boy's love of stationery. In college, we had special blue exam booklets, and I loved filling an entire 24-page book with evidence of my nerdiness and dreadful handwriting. That's the sound of work, of productivity, of creativity, of editing, of frustration. A false start becomes another opportunity to test your basketball shot into the waste paper basket. I like that set of words, too. Waste paper basket. So much nicer than trash can. How big is a sheet of paper? How long is a piece of string? There's a whole language and vocabulary around the size of paper. For instance, a sheet of paper that's 25 inches by 20 is called royal. Fold that paper in half, and then half again, and then a third time, and you get eight sheets, and they're called octavo. Other divisions are called folio, quarto, sexto, duodecimo, sextodecimo. That's 32 pages made up out of that one big royal sheet. But then there are British and American systems to identify paper sizes and proportions too. The imperial system starts with the emperor, which is four feet by six feet. Cut it down, and it successively becomes antiquarian, Grand Eagle, Double Elephant, Atlas, Columbier, and so on, all the way down to Broadsheet, Pinched Post, Brief, and Pot, with two Ts. The French, being French, have their own system, which goes from Univers to Grand Monde, Cavalier, Coquille, all the way down to Tellier, and cloche. A lot of these sizes have special purposes, too, like tellier, which was used in old French bureaucratic documents, or robert, which is reserved for anatomical drawings. Maybe this was named after Robert Ross, you know, the guy we call Bob Ross. The Germans came up with the international paper standard, the ISO 216 which is numbingly mathematical. It's based on a single aspect ratio of the square root of two. Instead of just folding bits of paper in half, they use a formula which defines an A0 piece of paper as the fourth square root of two times one over the fourth square root of two. In other words, 841 by 1,189 millimeters. Under this system, paper goes from A1 to C10 with various sizes and proportions, each having a precise geometric formula. I'm sure it's terribly clever and precise, but I prefer the whole business of double elephants and grand eagles, don't you? 
Speaking of business, business cards are a uniform size and proportion everywhere in the world, except in the United States, in Japan, and for some reason, Hungary. I did some research into why we prefer 8.5 by 11 sheets of paper, but the history is sort of fuzzy. I read somewhere that an 11 inch length of the page is about a quarter of, quote, the average maximum stretch of an experienced vat man's arms, unquote. In other words, the men who pull sheets of paper out of the pulping vat as they're made. I like that sort of organic approximation rather than the fourth root of two, etc., etc. I am very persnickety about the paper in my sketchbooks, and, well, it's a taste a set of preferences that changes. Smooth, hot press, rough, cold press, 60 pound, 100 pound, 300 pound, bright white, ivory, tan, brown, black, spiral bound, perfect bound, landscape, portrait. So many choices to meet my many moods. And that's another reason why I'm really looking forward to SketchCon in Pasadena, California, this November 2nd through 4th. It's our first convention of people who love to draw and paint. And I just can't wait to be with hundreds and hundreds of other people who appreciate paper, too. Hopefully, including you. Besides all the attendees and life models and the dozens of artists who will be giving presentations, we'll also be experts from the greatest manufacturers of art supplies to advise us and to demonstrate how to properly use all those magical things that they make. There will be people from Hanamula, who is our official sketchbook sponsor. They've been making paper for artists since 1584. And they make specialized paper for painters, for graphic artists, for illustrators, book binders, photographers, and printmakers. And I don't know, I just can't wait to learn more from them about paper. There's also going to be experts from Crescent who will demonstrate a new type of paper called Render, which is the first paper that won't show through when you use ink or paint or even heavy markers. If you ever had that experience of ruining a drawing when your marker bled through from the next page, you're going to want to see how this paper works in pads and sketchbooks. It's really a godsend. There will also be all kinds of companies who make the stuff that we use on paper, like Derwent, who've been making colored pencils since 1838, and Dale Rowney, who are our official marker and ink sponsor. And if you're excited about taking watercolor rules and how to break them when it starts in a couple of weeks, you're also probably looking forward to meeting the folks from Windsor & Newton, who will be the official color sponsor of SketchCon. They'll be bringing watercolor sets and markers and paint experts. And like all our sponsors, they'll be giving free samples galore to all the attendees. Again, hopefully including you. Zebra Pens will be there to show us some new lines of interesting technical pens that they've developed. Legion Paper will tell us about their beautiful sketchbooks. General Pencil will tell us about their fantastic products. And Blick Art Materials is going to be building an actual art supply store full of goodies right there on the floor of the convention. If you're an art supply fanatic like I am, these companies are another reason to come to Pasadena November 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. And if you want to know a lot of other reasons, get over to sketchcon.com. That's con with a K. And sign up. We only have a few tickets left, and they're going fast. So make sure you're included. I love small edition books in slip covers with cream colored paper printed with cadmium red initial caps and black debossed letter set type. I love the lox colored pages of the Financial Times. Reading a glossy magazine on a hot day and discovering the ink has transferred to my moist hands, leaving a ghost on the page. Blotter paper, sucking up mistakes. Crumbling pages of an ancient novel. It's acidic yellow paper, brittle and foxing. The word foxing, I love that too. 
oyster pails, the official name of those Chinese takeout containers. Manchettes, the frilly paper collars you find on the end of your lamp chop. Pizza boxes. Tea bags, square, round, with and without strings. My favorite beverage passing through my favorite material. But I don't like cold, wet tea bags, like abandoned murder victims, slimy and disappointed that their glory is past. They're too excremental. Speaking of, toilet paper. The Chinese invented it in the 6th century, just like the tea bag. Uh, paper towels, they're American, of course. Sanitary pads, tissues, Kleenex, diapers. And on a more civilized side, paper doilies under cream cakes and cucumber sandwiches with the crusts cut off. Lengths of butcher paper spooling off foot-thick rolls bolted to the counter in a steel frame and then ripped crisply along a bladed edge to be bound with unfurling skeins of red and white twisted twine. A dental bib with its little necklace of steel balls and alligator clips, its dimpled paper absorbing my blood, spit, and fear. Heavy vellum that takes soft lead like a dream and then smudges posterity. Sculpted paper at an artisanal paper mill, tectonic layers thick as egg cartons. Juicy, creamy, thick stationery, too good to use. Carbon copies on onion skin paper, paper clipped by clerks in steel rimmed spectacles long dead. Cartridge paper, hard, tough, used to pack shotgun shells, cartridge paper, as crisp as what it describes. Silk screen poodles on pre-war wallpaper. Foot-thick stacks of tissue paper on a store counter. Enfolding plates, glasses, lingerie, soft as carnation petals. The dehumanizing grip of a paper-covered examination table sticking to my clammy buttocks. Gridded oily pages of a cheap composition book made in China. Toothpick-thin strips of heavy stock for sampling essential oils at the perfumery. Distant newspapers, packed with an eBay purchase, stale with old cigarette smoke from far away. Paper wedding anniversaries, Paper straws that gum up and collapse under vigorous sucking. Now they might be making a comeback, replacing their plastic cousins, enemies of the environment. Spitballs masticated by fourth grade, third rate goons. My grandmother at her desk, shredding old accounts payable into confetti with her aluminum ruler. The savage shock of a paper cut. Bond, hot press bond. The sinful indulgence of any paper over 300 pounds. Architect's amber tracing paper ripped from rolls screwed to the drafting table, soon spidery with the lines of 6H mechanical lead and rapidograph ink. Drawing after dinner on paper restaurant tablecloths with a roller ball pen. Collecting shirt cardboard for some eventual 
unknown use. Paper airplanes that only occasionally, shockingly, fly where you aim them. Old banknotes, greasy, soft, and warm, with a sweet organic smell. Gift wrap with a slight rib texture that creases like a razor's edge to wrap around a box. My ancient Salinese prayer book, its cover made of bamboo slats, its pages slices of banana leaves filled with spidery Sanskrit script. A fortune-telling paper fish that flops around in your palm to reveal your destiny. Craft paper, which is spelled with a K and isn't just for crafts. It's paper made by the craft process, which is German for strength, and it pulps wood's long fibers into strong, coarse paper for grocery bags and flour and candy wrappers and cement sacks. Crafty. Our houses are built with paper. Wallpaper, of course. But also sheetrock or gypsum board, which is basically a plaster sandwich wrapped in paper. Sandpaper. Architects' blueprints printed out on light-sensitive paper. And paper's used in all the electrical bits of the house because it's a great insulator. And oddly, that kind of paper is called fish paper. Paper is also where information is stored. Sure, there are those dang-fangled computery things, but paper makes up all the books and magazines and newspapers and zines and diaries and journals and sketchbooks and logbooks and diplomas and exam booklets and report cards and driver's licenses and legal documents and registration papers and instruction sheets and user manuals, all those vital things that we've been accumulating since the dawn of time. Travel is full of paper. Boarding passes, train tickets, passports, baggage claim stubs, ridged passport pages festooned with mysterious tracery to preserve your identity so much more securely than warehouses full of buzzing computer servers, maps, hotel bills, B&B guest books, guidebooks, receipts. It's a paper trail from your home to the four corners of the world. Recycling immortal paper, morphing from love letters to refrigerator boxes to cat magazines to dental picks to gift wrap to parking tickets to baby wipes, refolding and crumpling to the end of time. A magical fact that I learned at eight, any sheet of paper, no matter how big, can only be folded in half and then again, eight successive times. Eight, and no more. It's a law of physics. Try to break it. Filigrinology. That's the study of watermarks. Folding a paper towel into a triangle when the coffee filters run out. Ancient printers wearing hats of folded newspaper. The heady smell of musty, rare books, the sweetest perfume. Crinkly, stretchy crepe paper. Soak it, and you can dye Easter eggs. Paper balls lurking in the toes of your new shoes. Kids' paper mache over withering balloons. Lottery tickets fractioned over and again in the treasure of Sierra Madre. Construction paper on classroom walls and refrigerator art exhibits. And then into storage boxes when the artist goes to college. Fish and chips 
in a vinegary newsprint cone. The grimness of cheap motel glasses wrapped and sanitized for my protection and that matching paper belt that encircles the toilet seat. The surefire excitement of florist paper encircling roses. Ripping open a fresh eight and a half by 11 brick of copy paper to feed the printer. The corpse of a forgotten note to self transformed and illegible in the pockets of freshly laundered jeans. The trembling promise and snowy expanse of a virgin sketchbook. Is paper dead? This week, the venerable counterculture newspaper, The Village Voice, went out of business. The paper folded. Actually, it hasn't been printed on paper for a year or now, but the website's gone too. It's a sad trend. No one seems to read newspapers and magazines anymore. All the newsstands in my neighborhood have been turned into Verizon stores. No one writes letters or sends postcards, postage stamps and envelopes and stationery and greeting cards and checkbooks and passbooks. They're all on the wane. Books have been replaced by the Kindle. PDFs have replaced conference reports. File cabinets have gone the way of the buggy whip. Kids don't doodle in the margins of their textbooks anymore because they all have Chromebooks and iPads. Thanks to all the marijuana legislation, maybe the rolling paper business is booming. There may not be any newspapers left to carry its own obituary, but I'm pretty sure that the rumors of the death of paper are very exaggerated. Long live paper. Well, thanks for joining me on this odd, papery odyssey. It looked like a good idea on paper, and I hope it translated into your eardrums while you worked on your own creative project. I also hope you and your watercolor sketchbook will be joining me and Kosha and Ian Sidaway and Ian Finelli and August Wren and Inma Serrano in our new course, Watercolor Rules, and how to break them. You can find out more at sketchbook.school. And, of course, I hope that you'll be coming to SketchCon in Pasadena this November. It'll be pretty amazing and full of opportunities to learn more ways to work with paper. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and leave us a nice review. And if you have any questions or comments, please email me at danny at sketchbookschool.com. Until next time, this is Art for All from Sketchbook School, and I am your humble paper pusher, Danny Gregory. (laughs) Bye-bye.